The 1950s were always marked as a period when an uneasy peace existed among the world's major powers. Although there was never an armed conflict as such, these powers were engaged in a political, economic, social, and ideological confrontation, strongly driven by impactful propaganda campaigns, consequently promoting advancements in military engineering. Under this premise, the then government of the Soviet Union began to develop projects for military vehicle manufacturing. Essentially, the idea was to create a fleet of mobile systems based on large capacity trucks designed for transporting loads in hostile environments with challenging weather and terrain conditions. These trucks were also intended for transporting and launching missiles and other types of heavy artillery developed during those years. It was then that the first prototypes of military trucks began to emerge. Specifically, in 1955, a prototype named ZSE-134 came to light. This prototype, based on an 8x8 configuration, aimed to navigate almost any terrain. Unfortunately, due to its limitation in carrying only 3 tons of cargo, despite its weight of 10 tons, and its reliance on a complex propulsion system, the project did not progress beyond producing a few prototypes. However, despite all its limitations, this vehicle served as a foundation for future projects in the Soviet engineering department. Just a year later, in 1956, the development of a unit specially designed to transport and launch Frog 7 missiles, also known as Luna M, began. This project was led by Vitaly Andrevich Grachev, an engineer who had been actively involved in previous technological developments. It resulted in the creation of the unit known as ZIL-135. While this unit began its development in the mid to late 1950s, it went through many refinement stages. This resulted in the production of numerous prototypes and various models with improvements or adaptations for different environments and specific tasks. In just its first four years of development, manufactured by ZL, several different models of this unit were created, including amphibious versions, as well as some highly specialized prototypes for extremely specific purposes. This made it a versatile baseline model for multiple versions of itself and even for other trucks built around that time. One of the notable cases was the manufacturing of the ZIL E-167 truck, which was heavily based on the ZIL-135 chassis, but with significant structural modifications. These included the attachment of three axles instead of four, and the installation of a superstructure to transport up to 14 people on Arctic expeditions. However, one of the primary challenges in conceiving this 8x8 vehicle was the ability to turn Grachev's ideas into a reality, as the main goal of him and his development team was to significantly reduce the weight and overall height of the structure in order to allow the transport of heavier and taller loads without the fear of it causing a stability issue. To achieve this, albeit seemingly incredible, they chose to eliminate the use of suspension in the wheels as they considered it unnecessary. Instead, they believed that low-pressure tires would be sufficient to compensate for the absence of this component, although, unfortunately, this led to significant stability problems. At speeds of only 15 to 20 kilometers per hour, the unit experienced considerable vibrations, especially on dirt roads. However, if the driver felt too bold and reached 60 kilometers per hour, they encountered a second, stronger wave of vibrations, capable of veering the vehicle off the road. This problem was partially solved in the later developed model known as ZIL 135K. The solution involved lengthening the chassis, allowing for greater separation between the outer axles. However, as it still lacked a proper suspension system, the issue of high-speed vibrations persisted, requiring the addition of a speed limiter. The mechanical aspect was one of the most important features as its propulsion system relied on two gasoline engines located behind the cab, each generating 180 horsepower. These engines were connected to their own gearbox and, in turn, to transfer cases. 
This setup provided all-wheel drive and allowed independent control of each side. With this capability, it can also operate with a single engine in cases of extreme necessity if one of the engines fails. This system was adopted due to the lack of a single engine suitable for the truck's purposes, which inevitably meant using a more complex, maintenance-intensive, and potentially less reliable system. Nevertheless, its mechanical capabilities, combined with its sturdy construction resulting from several years of improvements and updates, allowed it to achieve a carrying capacity equivalent to its own empty weight, 10.5 tons, although reaching this limit also posed a premature risk of failures or breakdowns. The dimensions of these units are approximately 9.3 meters in length, 2.8 meters in width, and a height of 2.53 meters, with slight variations among some models. Their ground clearance, a key feature, is just about 8 centimeters above half a meter. Due to these dimensions, both the first and last axles are designed to be steerable, facilitating maneuvering in tight spaces or emergency situations. Ironically, in subsequent years, starting from around 1962, the production of these units was overseen by the Bryansk automobile plant, known as Baz. This was due to Zill, despite being the original designer and developer, being overwhelmed with the production of other vehicles. While there were initial challenges, notably the fact that Baz couldn't manufacture the required automatic transmissions for the vehicle, in the medium term, it proved to be highly beneficial. The truck received substantial upgrades and modernizations that enhanced its overall capabilities. Under this new administration, these trucks had a truly virtuous future as new models were developed, adapted for various missile launchers and purposes. This ranged from civilian versions with cargo and towing platforms to purely experimental units powered by gas turbines or a single diesel engine. With 30 years of service in the military and even 210 units exported to allied countries, the most notable version produced was undoubtedly the Zill 135 LM. While its optimal operation is within temperature ranges from 40 to minus 40 degrees Celsius, a tropical version was developed to withstand warmer climates. Additionally, the use of fiberglass for the cabin construction not only reduces the overall weight of the unit, but also keeps the operators safe from the heat of the rockets and from debris or collateral damage. This was one of the trucks with the most radical changes as it incorporated a torsion bar suspension system on the steerable front and rear axles, as well as various internal and external improvements. However, one of its weaknesses was its fuel consumption, which under ideal conditions was around 88 liters per 100 kilometers. Nevertheless, in challenging situations, it could consume anywhere from 125 to an impressive 200 liters per 100 kilometers. The history of the evolution of this iconic truck culminated in 1994, when the production of these units, as well as their variants and prototypes, came to an end. Incredibly, despite the various challenges they might have presented, more than 5,000 units were produced since their launch year. It's not at all surprising to see that these trucks continue to be useful even today. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it valuable. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. We can't wait to see you in the next one.